Over 100 million people are expected to watch Super Bowl 58 as the San Francisco 49ers face the Kansas City Chiefs. The honor of hosting the iconic event goes to the groundbreaking Allegiant Stadium, nestled in the heart of Las Vegas. The sleek, futuristic building was constructed in less than three years for just under $2 billion, making it the second most expensive stadium in the world. It literally went from a plot of land like this to this. To say the 65,000 seater stadium is innovative would be an understatement. It boasts a retractable field which weighs as much as the Eiffel Tower, a motorized wall that opens up to the Las Vegas Strip, hospitality zones which rival nightclubs, a seven acre translucent roof, a BME button, next level connectivity, and how about a 95 foot torch which is the largest 3D printed structure in the world? Well, it has that as well. As you can imagine, building such a cutting edge stadium was one of the most complex and anticipated construction projects in Las Vegas of recent times. Coordinating over 10,000 specialists to work towards one goal with no chance for slipping up is no easy feat. Then the pandemic came before construction was complete to make it even harder. So how did they do it? Before we can talk about the intricate construction process, the ingenious design features, and how the Raiders have made the fan experience truly next level, we need to discuss how the stadium came about in the first place. The Oakland Raiders were in search of a new home since the 1980s. In 2015, they missed out on an opportunity to move to LA, as it was the Rams and the Chargers who took the chance to co-occupy the only stadium in the world more expensive than the Allegiant Stadium the SoFi Stadium. Luckily for Raiders owner Mark Davis, Las Vegas Sands were considering developing a new stadium in conjunction with the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Their goal was to replace the aging Sam Boyd Stadium and to make Vegas a powerhouse for serious sports. Mark visited Vegas and was excited by the plan and by spring 2016, he pledged $500 million towards the construction of the new stadium. Just months later, however, the viability of the Tropicana Avenue site was called into question. Southwest Airlines objected the location due to its proximity to a runway. Following this, a list of nine new locations were suggested. Each potential site needed to accommodate the size and infrastructure of an NFL stadium, whilst also providing sufficient accessibility. In January 2017, the Raiders filed relocation papers to move from Oakland to Las Vegas and also the Russell Road site was decided upon. It's adjacent to the strip, so it gets the traffic, but it's far enough away to not negatively affect the local businesses. Despite investors pulling out and having to be replaced, they closed the purchase of the land on May the 1st, 2017 for $77.5 million. The Las Vegas Raiders were born, but to start playing in Vegas, they needed their stadium to be built and the construction process was insane. But before we get to that, we need to talk about its breathtaking design. You don't get the title of being the second most expensive stadium in the world without having a design that redefines what it means to be a sports venue. And that holds true for the Allegiant Stadium. To sculpt the vision of Mark Davis, Manica Architecture were hired. The goal was to create a stadium which everyone involved in the club would be proud of. There were four key design elements which could not be bargained upon. They were having a real grass pitch, having a clear ETFE roof, having a curtain of dark glass on the outside, and finally, a wall that retracts to look onto the Las Vegas Strip. Manica Architecture over-delivered on these expectations. Not only does the Allegiant Stadium have a real grass pitch, but it also has a retractable one, allowing for the grass to be nurtured outside and also to host other events with a hard floor on the inside. The clear ETFE roof gives the stadium easy lighting control, but also the feel of being outside. The dark glass wraps around the stadium to reflect the busy streets of Las Vegas, and the retractable wall was implemented in front of the stadium's centerpiece, a 95-foot 3D printed version of the iconic Raiders torch. The final design allows for an intimate fan experience where they feel close to the action, Above that though, there are a lot of groundbreaking ways they've evolved the fan experience. 
This includes a record number of escalators, a state-of-the-art connectivity system, multi-layered garbage chutes, efficient cooling, luxury hospitality suites, local artwork, and my personal favorite, the BME button. But before we dive into them in detail, we need to discuss how they actually built the Mammoth Stadium. November 13th, 2017, the first shovel of dirt was removed from the 64 acre plot of land. This would be the start of a 31 month journey involving over 10,000 people to build the now iconic stadium. The project was a design build to allow for a faster construction. This means that the design company were finalizing parts of the stadium three to four months ahead of where the construction company were currently building. This meant for a quick build time, but didn't allow for any mistakes. The stadium sits below ground level, which made it easier to get permits. It kept the height of the stadium lower and allows for better circulation in the building. However, to do this, a lot of ground had to be removed. So much that an army of diggers wouldn't be efficient enough. Combine that with the ground being caliche, which is essentially very hard rock. There was only one answer, explosives. The mass excavation required over 40,000 truckloads to remove the 1 million cubic yards of dirt. Foundations was up next and more than 16 miles of piling was needed to support the stadium and to ensure it doesn't sink into the ground. Then it was time for concrete, but because they required so much, it was more efficient for them to build a batch plant on site. Essentially, this allowed them to have concrete on tap. 105 cubic yards of concrete was used in total. Now the footings were in place, the construction could start going vertical, allowing for much more action to take place and more workers on site. During some of the busier periods, the project was costing upwards of $5 million per day. As summer approached, the heat began to rise in Vegas, which can negatively affect how concrete sets. To combat this, they introduced night shifts. Some crews would start at 2am, working through the night to lay concrete. Each quarter, the Raiders hosted worker appreciation lunches with Mark Davis and other high-profile members to give something back to the people working hard to bring the stadium to life. The next key step of the project was one of the most important and complex parts, the steel. The tolerances were so tight for placing each piece. The margin of error was just 0.00006%. Each piece of steel had a bullseye on it. Combining this with GPS tracking meant they could accurately place it. The first erected piece of steel weighed a whopping 113,000 pounds, or in other terms, eight elephants. They used the largest crane in North America to place the 28 roof canopy modules, weighing nearly 700,000 pounds each. As you can imagine, the counterbalance on these cranes are massive. Over the following nine months, more than 56 million pounds of structural steel was placed held together by 482,000 bolts, one of the biggest steel jobs in the country. The steel project culminates in a topping out ceremony. Everyone who has participated on the project to date got a chance to sign the last piece of steel before it was erected. 2,400 glass panels were assembled off site and placed around the stadium. They were non-negotiable for owner Mark Davis before the design process had even started. Not only do they fit the Raiders branding, but they also keep the building cool. Technology played a crucial role to help manage a project of this size. For example, they had a drone which could fly around the site in an hour, capturing images. It then evolves into a 3D environment which helps them plan many things, such as to see how much dirt they have left on site or the current best travel routes around the project. They also use VR renderings of inside the stadium to help communicate ideas better to potential partners. For example, they could show what the stadium would look like as a music venue for artists who are touring. However, before construction could finish, disaster struck. The world was hit by a pandemic, which meant they had to implement new social distancing and safety features, but the build must go on. The next stage was the roof. They opted for a closed roof over a retractable one so that all fans could share the same experience, rather than some being in the shade and some being in the sun. The ETFE roof that they chose is not only very light, but it's also possible to change the opaqueness, giving them greater control of the stadium's lighting. 
The roof structure requires an upper and lower level separated by a strut. This was built on the floor and once connected, the entire grid was slowly lifted inch by inch to the roof. The next contractor, Vector Folytech, could then install the ETFE panels. Again, its completion marked another huge milestone in the project. The grass was one of the last major undertakings before the Raiders could host their first game. The Bermuda grass was brought to the stadium by 30 refrigerated truckloads and it happened overnight so the temperature was cooler. It was placed on what is essentially a huge metal tray on tracks which allows the field to move in and out of the stadium. The tray also has a drainage and irrigation system. Every time they change its position, it takes about an hour and a half, which seems reasonable when you find out that it weighs 20 million pounds, a similar weight to the Eiffel Tower. Well, after more than two and a half years of construction, there she was, what, probably 18 months ago, Allegiant Stadium will be basically done today. Whilst there were still some parts to finalize inside, the stadium was nearly ready to host its first game. It's such a shame, however, that after all that hard work, it had to be played without fans due to the pandemic. A huge anticlimax for everyone involved. What makes this construction process even more incredible is that whilst they were building the Allegiant Stadium, they were also building a state-of-the-art headquarters just 13 miles away, including a large office building, an indoor training facility, a performance center, and multiple outdoor grass fields. If you want more detail on how the stadium was built, watch the series called From the Ground Up on the Raiders YouTube channel. I've linked it in the description. But now for the fun part, how the inside of the stadium has changed the game for fans. When you spend nearly $2 billion on a stadium, you want to make sure that the fan experience is better than any other in the world and the Raiders implemented many innovative pieces of tech to reach this goal. They opted to make the stadium cashless for all transactions, not because of COVID, but in an attempt to reduce waiting times at food and drink stalls. To not upset fans who only bring cash though, reverse ATMs are inside the stadium, allowing users to put their cash in and out comes a prepaid card with that amount of money on, which can also be spent outside the stadium until the balance is gone. A beer me button was added to the app, which, when pressed, orders a beer directly to your seat whilst the transaction goes on in the background. Everything they've implemented is about efficiency, and this is no different for the way fans move around inside. Most stadiums average 20 escalators. The Allegiant Stadium, however, has 46. This allows fans to find their seats quickly on game day and means they don't have to have huge walkways on the outside of the stadium. With the ever-growing presence of social media, having good connectivity was vital. To avoid the networks being overwhelmed from the 65,000 fans, they installed cellular systems inside the stadium, with each sector having its own. Wi-Fi 6 is also available to each fan, thanks to miles of cabling underground. Everywhere you walk in the stadium, fans will find unique and colourful artwork, which visually shows the history of both Las Vegas and the Raiders. Michael Goddard was approached to head up a team of over 70 artists to complete this project. And finally, they have some of the greatest hospitality areas in the world. The Winfield Club spans the whole north end zone with 29 booths to provide a nightclub experience during an NFL match. There are also multiple luxurious hospitality suites, starting at a minimum of $20,000 per match. The owner, Mark Davis's suite, is the only in the stadium to have white seats. Without a doubt, the Allegiant Stadium is a marvel of modern engineering and shows what is capable when an unwavering vision meets relentless dedication. The Raiders have now enjoyed a few years of showing their fans the true capability of the stadium. But on February the 11th, 2024, it will have the attention of the world as it hosts American football's biggest stage, Super Bowl 58.